Howdy, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Curly Hall, R.W. Hall. I'm with the Federation of Black Cowboys, and I'd like to welcome you to our hacienda, Curly's Cowboy Hacienda. And uh, with that in mind, I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, why and how I became a cowboy. You know, we're living here in the urban area, New York City, Queens, but you know, there's not many horses and there's not many cattle and things of that. So how do you get called, be, to be called a cowboy? You know, so many, many years ago when I was a little fella, maybe 10 years old, my mother and father, they had taken me to, uh, to Lynn's Riding Academy. You know, that's in Forest Park. But what happened is that when they took me there to sit on the horse and just get pony riding and everything, it puts a spirit in me. It put a spirit in me that I couldn't kick. That spirit kept on running. I would always be interested in riding a horse. And you know what happened? When I was 13 years old, I used to go out and start shining shoes. Shining shoes every day, every weekend, every evening, whenever I could to make money to ride the horse. I used to go, me and two other my buddies, if they didn't have the money, I would pay for them. You know, at that time, it was only $1.50 to ride for an hour, you know, on the horse. You know, so I say that to say that it was so much fun. And I became so adapted to getting on the horse and riding. The, uh, at the stable, uh, the stable uh, team leader and everything used to let us go out by ourselves. Actually, we were just 13 years old, 14, 13, and we were taking the horses out by ourselves because we knew the trail. And we were good riders. We got on it. All the young kids going into different teams and athletic, uh, what do you say, if they're gymnastics or swimmers, they all are very good at the age of 13 and 14. You know, so it wasn't a problem for us to become good riders and enjoy that type of thing. So as we rode all, we went every weekend. And then of course, finally, it slowed down a little bit and we stopped. But once I got married, I uh, went riding every so often. I had children. I had my children go to riding camp for, with horses. And uh, I was still all embedded in the idea of horsemanship. You know, w one of the things that really set me up as well as that I had gone to Madison Square Garden and in Madison Square Garden way back in that time 1958 or something of that nature 55 they used to have the rodeo come there and one of the cowboys that was there was Uncle Ben I later met him later in life but Uncle Ben won the world championship at that time and uh, he uh, really impressed me. But what else also impressed me was the Long Ranger and Tonto. You know, the Long Ranger and Tonto were on the movie pictures all the time, and the television and the cowboys and in the, the theaters. And I was so in love with that idea. They had them ride around in the arena. You know, during that course of time, the Long Ranger and the different other actors, they used to assist the rodeos to make more of a crowd, to have more people come to their rodeos. But in Madison Square Garden, as I was told, they didn't have a problem packing the place. And I was there with the Cub Scouts, my Cub Scout troop. And I remember saying, Oh, gee, I would love to do that. I would like to be on that horse riding around the arena like that. And sure enough, many years later, I was in one of the rodeos in uh, Philadelphia, I think it was, at the, uh, one of the colleges. There was, uh, uh, I can't remember which the name of the uh, arena was, but we rode the rodeo there. And I remember enjoying loving the idea that I'm riding in a rodeo. So it was really a great part. And someday, 
you might enjoy it as well if the horse but horsemanship is going down and down you know not as many horses around as before but we of the federation of black cowboys and cowgirls now are a part of the new york city area and we're also giving uh horseback riding lessons and and uh teaching the kids about uh the old time uh what you call historical men cowboys and cowgirls um there was as you you might have heard the name uh ben bass reeves he was the first black marshal the first black marshal of the states of the united states and he one of his things he used to dress up all the time when he dressed up as a a little uh what do you say a hobo or dress up as a uh any kind of makeup or something he used to come in and catch his criminals like off guard and he would actually arrest them because they didn't believe or know he was a, a marshal u.s marshal and the story till today the story today is the long ranger theater the long ranger movie the long ranger episodes were created because of bass reeves who they imitated in their portions of the silver bullets and different things of that kind. Oh man, oh man, you wouldn't believe how many uh, black cowboys and cowgirls there were that made a lot of historical settings back in the West. You know, one thing, do you know where the word cowboy came from? This, this is always amazing to me. The word cowboy came from long time ago on the plantations after they brought us over from Africa and saying we to tend to the farms the, the 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 plantation owner he said hey boy go out and do my field hey he had a field hand then he had a house boy and then he had a cowboy he said hey boy go out and get my cow go bring those cattle in there boy so the word cowboy became a very historical beautiful thought I want to be a cowboy. It's no longer a derogatory word. It is a great uh, uh, kind of thing to be a cowboy. But you won't find too many around. The Federation of Black Cowgirls and Boys are definitely on the money with trying to keep the education alive with the spectation or the, uh, the kids. We, we, we venture and we go to different schools, giving them the understanding of historical settings every february we should be doing it every during the year everything but the schools uh in the black history month are always looking for uh uh black history to be taught to the kids and of course we are known out there so they give us a call and we speak with them they have a great time because we do a lecture demonstration and that lecture lecture demonstration uh includes involving them in a little rope uh, tricks and say no they they just love it they just love it. well you know as I can say right now we used to have our group the Federation of Black Cowboys we had maybe 53 members everyone had horses in order to be a part of the group you had to have a horse and that, that goes back 22 years ago or something even 15 10 years ago you know we had all had horses and we used to do rodeos at the Cedar Lane Stables, which was the stable that we created right here near uh, Howard Beach in Brooklyn, right at the borderline, you know. So we had really made a name for ourselves for all the Queens students in the kindergarten, in the first grade. We used to have barn tours. Barn tours allowed them to see the different types of animals we had on the thing. The, the, uh, we had uh, uh, thoroughbreds, we had, uh, oh boy, quarter horses. We had, we had about 53 horses. We had ponies and uh, it was really, really a great spectacle for the kids to see how you wash the horse, how you do, you know, the, the idea of being a horseman really never I never knew it was going to be my one of my passions I only had a desire but I never had a goal to make it happen but you know now we have 
another goal, something very special. The historical features of the Native American and the Black American cowboy. And also along with that, we are doing the history of the slaves and the Black slaves that were brought over from different, uh, 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 different parts of Africa. Right now we have our museum that we're opening up and I, we would like you to visit. In five, four, three. Right, right. okay, you know, I was just talking about rodeo, rodeo and when I was speaking about the rodeo and how we enjoyed it from happening, we had a couple of great people before us, years ago historically, um, Bill Pickett. The Bill Pickett rodeo is still occurring, and it's all black contestants. These guys are great, uh, living the life of a historical setting. However, you know, in, in the modern day time as well, we have uh, an eight-time world champion. Uh, we got Fred Whitfield right here, and he, right now, he was world champion for eight times in bulldogging and calf roping and different kinds of things of that kind. He's right here. This, this shirt here is the sixth time he won. It was part of his sixth time championship. And this is his hat right here on the wall. Even though I've got a hat, I think I like my hat better than his though, but it, it never won any uh, championship. And you know, other, we have another bulldogger this is Mountain Man Ellis. Mountain Man Ellis was a bulldog champion, won the black championship up in, uh, uh, I can't remember the location. However, uh, he was, you know, one of the great bulldoggers. However, you know what he told me? He told me a secret. And you know what he said? He said, Curly, he said, you know what happened to me that day? He said, when I grabbed the bull, his horn got stuck on my, my pants leg. And his horn ripped my pants, but it stayed in. And I was able to pull him over with my weight and, my, and with my arm. So he said, I had a little extra help that day winning the championship. And I, I laughed so hard because we know how hard it is to turn over one of them calves real hard. But you know, Mountain Man, he also was our chef cook. He would be a hunter. He would go out and get the deer. He would go and get the rabbits and make the stuff right out on our campfire and all of that. This is some of the pans. These pans, pots and pans, are over 250 years old. But these pans here created all of the food for all of the cowboys. Sometimes we have 30 cowboys on a particular, uh, what would you call it? Not a ranch site but out when we would take a big trail ride and everything. But you know, we had a great time. And let me introduce you to our place. Hey, howdy everybody. Howdy, this is Cowboy Curly here. Yeah? Hey, good afternoon, good morning, everything. I want you to say howdy everybody. When I say howdy, you say yeah. Howdy everybody, yeah. Mighty fine, listen up. My name is Cowboy Curly, and I welcome you to, to the Hacienda. And this is the home of the Federation of Black Cowboys. You know, we often say that we enjoy animals, but you know, we enjoy our animals. We've got several of our horses here. We got Jay Diamond, and we got uh, Fire, and we got uh, uh, Sparky, all of the horses in which we enjoy riding. Uh, you know, many years ago, we used to ride the, what would you say, the range and we used to herd cattle. And how do you herd cattle? You get on the horse and you're taking them to market. But do you know what this is? This is a, called a whip. But this whip is not made to hit horses or anything. It's for the purpose of herding the cattle. See, a number of times we used to ride and have about a thousand herd of cattle and some of the cattle used to strand themselves and go far away up into the grassy area. And down here was all plains with sand and dust, dust all in our nose. That's why we had to cover our faces up. You know, so we used to go up and have to go ride over, get the horses, ride, and get the cattle. We had to make the cattle turn. 
and the way you make the cattle turn is with the cracking, the sound of the whip. This is called the cracker, the fall and the cracker. Now, what happens is that the way you crack the whip, hip, hip, hip. When you're on the horse, hip, hip. And, you know, the cattle would turn during that time. There was different ways to crack the whip, hip, 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 hip. You know, a long time ago, also, it wasn't so long for me because I'm on my way out, but when we would get on the phone, we get having our grub at nighttime after we pushed all the cattle, what we used to do is have a little game. And wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know what this is? This is no, not just a rope. It's called a lariat. A lariat. It's not an item in which you jump rope with the children do now, but it is something that we used to play with. One of the things is that this lariat, and it's not a lasso, this lariat has a hole called a hondo in the end of it. And on the end of this lasso, we take the tail. This is a tail. It's called and we used to play, have playing games. And the object of the game was whoever can twirl the rope without the rope touching the ground or falling out of a circle would win the contest. Let, let me just demonstrate one little idea. You said, whoa, whoa, ah. As we see, we see the circle forming. See the circle? Yeah, yeah, yeah! Let's give Curly, let's give Curly a yeehaw. But you know, that was one of the small twirls of rope, twirl it. But then we would give a larger one. And the larger had a longer tail on it. We put the tail in the hondo and the, and the hole at the end. And we bring it over and now the object was to be able to twirl the rope and then jump into the circle. I don't know if I can do that, but let's see, get all of the tail inside the circle. You know, it's been a while, but as you get, you see the circle getting bigger? Right, howdy, howdy everyone. I'd like you to meet Jay Diamond. He is one of my uh, older and most matured animals which is a horse. Do you like the horse? Well, this little fella's been around for a long time. And do you believe, do you believe he can understand English? Not Spanish, but he can understand English. Matter of fact, let me show you. Turn around. Good boy, you did all right, okay. Okay, little fella. Now, Okay, you want to count? Count to eight. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now you're counting, now you're counting correctly. Give me a smile, give me a smile. Go ahead, smile, smile, good boy. Take my hat off now, take my hat, take my hat off. Uh-oh, uh-oh, pick up, pick my hat up, pick it up, pick it up, pick up my hat. Give it to me, dust it off, dust it off. Good, thank you, Jay Diamond. Thank you. Thank you. You're out on the prairie. You're out on the prairie like that, huh? Uh, uh, uh. All right, little fella. You know what? Come on. Go back in. Yeah, it's Go ahead, inside. Uh, uh, uh. We're just going to grab him around and we're just going to take him. We're going to show him. Come on, buddy. Come on, we'll never hurt you. Alright, we're gonna teach you how to do this. Come on. Right to the wall. Right to the wall. Now. Steady. 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 Back up. 
ไม่เจ็บนะเอ้ของของที่ที่ของที่ที่ที่เอ๊ะเอ๊ะดิคิดูนิโอ้โหนู้นู้นคิดูนิโอ้เอ๊ะโอ้เอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ๊ะเอ
you make, you, you gotta make sure you make the move, not the horse. The horse gotta stay. No, no, you need to go anywhere, do you? See that? We don't want that. So, hey, right, right there. Sister. Some horses, they, they tend to move away when you try to saddle themselves. <laughs> the way I work with them, I work a lot doing this. Put that saddle on him. Yep. And he will start to try to move away. Yep. <laughs> hey. Yep. So that's why we do we do slowly. But if they continue doing it, I have a different technique for that. Back up. Back up. Nope. Nope. See the wall? Put him against the wall. And you hold him there. You try to mount it as many times as you can. You're gonna get tired of that. You don't care. He's gonna sit there. But he's gonna run one thing the next day that he can't move from that. And then you take him out of there when you're ready to mount. See? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh. Yeah.